they gonna start telling you what they ain't gonna do and what they gonna do and what they ain't gonna do. But if you put that rod of correction on them, put some fear in them from the start, then they gonna do like you tell them to do. I know, I'm a, I'm a prime example. <laughs> mama put that rod of correction on me, and that was it. Whatever mama say, that's what I'm gonna do. You understand? That's why we got children around here now. You can't tell them nothing. They running wild, running out, running around with guns and knives and you know, shoot people and everything. But if mom and daddy had put that rod of correction on their butt and put some fear in their heart, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't run around talking crazy to grown folks. Mm -hmm. You can't tell them nothing. They know everything. You know, you 16, 17 years old and you know everything. Don't know nothing. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh, 14. Uh-huh. Thou shalt beat him with the rod. Uh-huh. And shalt deliver his soul from hell. Oh. You shall beat him with the rod and deliver his soul from hell. Because that's what he's bound for. Mm -hmm. If you don't teach him the word of God, like you train up a child the way he go, that's what he's bound for. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. You're driving that foolishness out of him so he don't go to hell. You go, you're trying to deliver his soul from hell. Now, if you're trying to deliver your child's soul from hell, then don't you love that child? Each. Mm -hmm. Don't you love him? Let's go now. Let's go to, because you know, kids think that, you know, daddy want to come home, or mama want to come home, and that's all they want to do is get on me. No, mama want to come home, and daddy want to come home, kick back, eat, watch a little TV, you know, sit around for a little while, and then get ready for work the next day. That's what mama want, got time to be worried about you every day and chastising you every day. Just like children, they want to come home, they want their little snacks, they want to play on their little game, they want to go outside and play, right? Okay, well, mom and daddy want to relax. They ain't got time to come home every day, chest ties you. Ain't nobody getting no thrill out of that. Mm -hmm. Getting their blood pressure up every day. Because you don't know how to act. Let's go to Proverbs the 13th chapter. Back up to Proverbs 13 and 24. Proverbs 13 and 24. And a child that don't obey their parents, they're going to grow up in poverty. I meant to put that in here, but that's all right, though. Because a lot of them find it out already on their own. You don't, or you don't obey your parents, you're going to grow up in poverty. Proverbs 13, and we're going to pick up at verse 24. Proverbs 13 and 24. Go ahead. He that spareth his rod hated his son. Woo! Wait a minute. You see that? He that spared the rod, he hated his son. You see that? Hate. What's the opposite of hate? Love. love. You put that rod of correction on you love him because you love him. You don't want them to grow up being no criminal and then the police shoot his brains out or something. Yes, sir. Or he locked up for, the, for killing somebody for the rest of his life. Or you know, or he get beat down in the streets by the police because he don't know how to act. He don't know how to control himself. Read that again. Twenty-four. Uh huh. He that spared his rod hate of his son. Uh huh. But he that loveth him chastise him betimes. You see that? He that chastise him loves him betimes. That's why mom and daddy chastise me. That's why your, our mothers and fathers chastise us. That's why we chastise our children, because we love them. Nine times ten, we done been where they trying to go. So we already know what's up. You know, the Lord don't let us live uh, 50 years old for nothing. You ain't seen nothing. You don't know nothing. You know, they act like mom and daddy. They, old, they don't know nothing. But we've been here for almost 50, or some of us have been here for almost 50 years plus. But we don't know nothing. Children, y'all need to take heed to your mother and father. I don't care how old you get. Mama, my mother, 82 years old, she can still tell me something. Amen, yeah. brother. Mm -hmm. Still tell me something. Grown older people older than me, they can still tell me something. I still respect my elders. 
Let's go now. What verse? Okay, let's go to Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Because look at what the Lord said for those disobedient children to their parents. Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 7. Leviticus 20 and 7. Look what the Lord said about these disobedient children. <clears throat> Leviticus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read it. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, uh -huh. and be ye holy. For I, for I am the Lord your God. Uh huh. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. Go ahead. For every one that curseth his father or his mother uh -huh. shall be surely put to death. Ooh. You see that? Everyone that curseth his mother or his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. You see how serious this is with the Lord? Yes, sir. This is how, just talking crazy to your mama, cursing at your mother, your father, the Lord said, put them to death. The Lord would do that now. Go ahead, read that over. For everyone that curses his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Uh-huh. He have cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. His blood shall be upon him. Now, let's go to, uh, let's look, let's go, let's look at it again. Uh, Proverbs 20 and 20. Proverbs 20 and 20. Kids, you better... And they're grown folks too. They still got parents. <laughs> Not just the children, but the grown folks too. He, that cur he ain't saying the child that curses his mother and father did it. Make it plain, brother. He said he that curses his mother and father let him be put to death. Make it plain. But most assuredly, these children, man, they need... We need. We, we should be putting the rod of correction on their butt just like our parents did us. But then you got the law always trying to step in to stop you. But then who get them though when uh when they get out of control they get older who get them then? The law do don't they? Unless they get some type of control of themselves. At some point they start listening and understanding that life ain't no big party. You can't go around doing what you want to do. Because I'm almost 50 years old. I, still, I can't go around doing what I want to do. Because there are laws with God and there are laws with man that I must abide by if I want to be a productive member of society and if I want to get eternal life. Amen, brother. We all got laws we have to abide by. Proverbs 20 and 20. Proverbs 20 and 20. Go ahead. Whoso curses his father or his mother, uh -huh. his lamp shall be put out uh -huh. in obscure darkness. Ooh. You see that? <laughs> he said, you curse his father or mother, put his lights out. <laughs> Lord ain't playing, is he? That's why, you know, I'm all off the wonder, you know, what are these kids thinking about? Because when we was coming up, boy, you talking back to mama and daddy, you, 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 your life sure enough got put out. He might not kill you, but your life got picked up, put out, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You wake up, what happened? <laughs> the mama that knocked you backhand you. Mm -hmm. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, so he said, and he that cursed his father and mother, put his lamp out. Put his light out. Let's go to second king. Because, you know, you ain't just got to curse your father and mother. For those children that, and people that disrespect their elders. Mm -hmm. Disrespect their elders. Not just their mother and father, but their elders. Let's go to 2 Kings, the uh, uh, second chapter. 2 Kings, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, pick it up at verse 22. We're going to get straight to it. 2 Kings 2 and 22. You know, kids going around disrespecting their elders. Look at what happened to these kids. Go ahead and read. Verse 22. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. 2 Kings 2 and 22. Yes, sir. Oh. 
Sorry about that. That's all right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, 222. Uh huh. So the waters was healed until this day, uh -huh. according to the saying of Elisha, uh -huh. which he spake. And he went up from this unto Bethel. And as he was going up, by that, the way. Now this, now this Elisha now, the prophet. He said he went up from this unto Bethel. And as he went, and he, as he was going up, by the way, go ahead. There came forth little children out of the city. Uh-huh. And mocked him. And mocked him. You know, disrespecting the elders. The elders. And what happened? And mocked him and said unto him, Uh-huh. Go up, thou bald head. Uh-huh. Go up, thou bald head. You know, some children, they say worse than this these days, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know. Go ahead. Go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them. Uh-huh, he just turned back and looked at them. He said, go up now, bald head, you know, calling them out. <laughs> he turned back and looked at them. Are we still up? Yes. Go ahead. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the, in the name of the Lord. And he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And there came forth two, two she-bears out of the woods. Uh-oh, they come two she-bears out of the woods. Now, where they come from? <laughs> The Lord, Lord said to them. Amen, brother. <laughs> he come two she bears out of the wood. Not male bears, but women. They, they more ruthless. You understand? But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. Ooh. And to and kill forty and two of them. Go ahead. And he went from this to Mount Carmel. And from this he returned to Samaria. It looks like he had a the world, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He prayed to the Lord and cursed them. And he come teach two she bears out of the wood and killed 42 children. So, you know, you kids, you children, you young people, y'all better be uh, uh, better be mindful and be respect, of, uh, uh, re respect your elders. You better respect your elders because you don't never know who you disrespecting. Could be a man of God, and he turn around and curse you, and then next thing you know, you get hit by a car or something. Not killed, but maybe hit by a car or something. Something bad happened to you. That's why I always respect my elders. Amen, brother. 1 Corinthians 7, and I'm almost 50. 1 Corinthians 7, and we're going to pick up at verse 8. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 8. See, everybody's got a role to play. That's why I named this Marriage and Family Conduct. Because we all got a role to play, including the children. 1 Corinthians 7 and 8. And the children's role is to obey your parents and obey God, because they're going to teach you what does say the Lord. They're supposed to. 1 Corinthians 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians 7 and 8. Go ahead and read it. And I say therefore to the unmarried and widow. Uh-huh. It is good for them if they abide even as I. See, you know, because Paul was a eunuch. You know, he didn't deal with women. He didn't lay with women. But that's Paul, though. You understand? Because God didn't say that. Paul said that. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, read that one more time. Yes, sir. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, uh -huh. it is good for them if they abide even as I. Uh -huh. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. But if they cannot contain, it didn't say let them stay together. It said let them marry. Go ahead and read. For it is better to marry than to burn. It is better to marry than to burn. Now, you know, you got some people say, yeah, well, you know, uh, we laid together and everything. And, you know, uh, she said I'm going to be uh, uh, her, her husband. And she, I told her she's going to be my wife. That's good. You understand? Y'all committed to each other. Y'all said, hey, I'm not going to be with nobody else. You're not going to be with nobody else. We're going to uh, be each other's. That's good. What verse you at? Ten. Go ahead. And until the Mary I command, uh -huh. yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Uh -huh. 
But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Go ahead. Or be re reconciled to her husband. Uh huh. And let not the husband put away his wife. And let not the husband put away his wife. Because the Lord hate putting the weight on him. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Uh huh. Now Paul said this. Go ahead. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, uh huh. Let him not put her away. Now, he said, if a woman, uh, if uh, any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. I agree with that. Because, you know, you got some people think that, you know, if she don't believe like I do, then she got to go. No, mm -hmm. oh, man. <laughs> she ain't cursing your God. She ain't pushing, put no pork in your food on the slide and all that stuff, man. <laughs> no. You can't just put your wife away. The Lord hate putting away. Yes. And he gonna tell, we're going to read why, how a man could put away his wife. But go ahead and read, though. Yes, sir. Uh, 13. Uh-huh. And the woman which have a husband that believeth not. Uh-huh. And if he be pleased to dwell with her. Uh-huh. Let her not leave him. Let her not leave him. Go ahead. For the unbelieving husband is sanct sanctified by the wife. Because you know, you never know. Because uh, if she doing it so long, he might well he might start he might start keeping the Sabbath. You know, he might start honoring it. He might not, you know, necessarily go to church right at first. But when she come home, she, he ain't got the radio playing. You know, he ain't cooking. He ain't sitting up watching a football game. Hey, baby, you just got from church. You know, uh, the bass playing. You know, no, he ain't doing none of that. He, he, he respect her, and he respect her God, and so therefore he ain't doing those things. Right. Amen. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir, back at 14. Uh-huh. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, uh -huh. and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Uh -huh. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Because that's what the Lord is looking for, a holy seed, ain't he? Yes, sir. He said, else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. So the husband is sanctified by the wife, and the wife is sanctified by the husband. Because the husband could be going to church. And, uh, right, and then he come home. She got, she could be having everything going in the house and doing this and doing that. But when he come home, she not doing these things. So therefore, she is respecting her husband's God, and she's honoring the Sabbath too, isn't she? That's right, brother. That's right. Go ahead and read. Verse fifteen. Uh huh. But if the unbelieving depart. Let him depart. But if the unbeliever, he just say, you know what, I can't do this no more. He want to go, let him let him go. Because it ain't on her, it's on him, ain't it? That's right, brother. Go ahead and read. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Uh-huh. But God hath called us to peace. Go ahead. For what knoweth thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? See, you never know. You might, the husband, the wife, she might save her husband. He might one day be thinking, say, you know what, man? She been doing this for 10 years. Let me go and see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, bam, he comes to class every Sabbath. Yes, sir. You know, I, I was wondering about that. I was wondering about that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord started opening his eyes up. Why? Because of his wife. That's right, brother. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Oh, how know that old man? Uh-huh. Whether thou shalt save thy wife. And the same thing. He could be going for 12 years, 15 years. She, what day she? Man, he been doing this. And he, you know, he really doing this thing. Let me go and see what this is all about. <coughs> and bam, next thing you know, she keeping the Sabbath. That's right. Man. She said, look, turn that Sunday stuff off. You know, <laughs> the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So you never know. You know, you if you if you dwell with that person, y'all be pleasing to dwell together. Then you know, you never know. One day he might flip, and one day you, the woman might flip. And that's the main objective, ain't it? Yes, Amen. sir. Yes, sir. Let's go now. Let's go to uh. Let's go to uh. First Peter the second chapter. You know, cause we read earlier, earlier uh. You know, 
If they want to dwell together, then uh, uh, let them marry. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is why, you know, one of the things that I say about, you know, getting that piece of paper. First Peter, the second chapter. In verse 13, if they want to do the, the man or woman thing, then let them get the paper. Because this is why I say that. 1 Peter 2 and 13. 1 Peter 2 and 13. Go ahead. Submit yourself. Let me just say this. Because at once, because you know, if a man or a woman say, you know, I'm yours and you mine, and y'all coming to cover together, and y'all laying everything together, in God's eyes, y'all married. But he also tell you this, though. 2 and 13. Go ahead. <clears throat> Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. You see that? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. And the man ordinance is ordinance is, is that you get that piece of paper. That's right, brother. Law. That's the law. That you get that piece of paper. That's what that's the land that we live in. Some lands don't even have that. They don't have no piece of paper. But this land that we live in, you gotta have a piece of paper. Because, you know, you don't want the person that you done built your life with and y'all accumulated all these things together, he die and or she die and then uh, somebody else get it. You know, like they money. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, does that make sense or no? Mm -hmm. You know, y'all done built the life together. You know, uh, she got her 401k, you got yours and everything, but then you can't touch her. It goes to her children. because Why? Because y'all ain't married. Mm -hmm. Or he died, you can't touch him. It's going to his children or whoever. When you the one was there with them, with them washing his dirty clothes, feeding them, and doing, uh, doing the wifely duty. When you was there with, your, with, with that woman, take care of her, uh, 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 provide for her, doing the husband duty. So he said, uh, uh, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. The Lord is the one that's telling you to do this, not me. Go ahead. Whether it be to the king as supreme. Uh-huh. Or to governors as unto them that are sent by him. Go ahead. For punishment of evildoers. Uh-huh. And for the praise of them that do well. Go ahead. For, <clears throat> excuse me. For so is the will of God. For so is the will of God. God. This is the will of God. Go ahead and read. Because he said it's better to bury than to burn, didn't he? Indeed. Well, so is the will of God. Go ahead. That with well doing, uh -huh. ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Now, let's go to uh let's go to uh uh, uh Matthew the 19th chapter. Matthew 19. We ain't got but a few more. Matthew 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, pick it up at verse 7. Matthew 19 and 7. And that's another reason why I say, you know, you should get the paper. Because, you know, uh, it ain't, because man, he does it, this my woman. He can break any time. Y'all get into it. I'm gone. Or she can. I'm gone. But you you got that piece of paper, that marriage certificate. Ain't that, it ain't that simple no more now, is it? You bound by that paper. <laughs> and when he call you on it or she call you on it, you going to have to give up something. Somebody going to have to give up something. Something that's due to them. Matthew 19 and 1. Matthew 19 and 1. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee uh -huh. and came to the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for, for every cause? You see that? They ask me, you know, can he put away his wife for anything? <laughs> you know, because men would like to do that too, wouldn't they? <laughs> and a woman too. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And he answered and said unto them, 
Have ye not read that he which make them at the beginning make them male and female? Uh-huh. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Uh-huh. And they twine shall be one flesh. Jesus told him, he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. See, if you get married, like, if you get married, you want flesh now. There ain't no, you know, I'm gone and all this stuff. Okay, you leave, but then you're going to have to pay a little later on when she's giving you that bill of divorcement. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. Uh -huh. Wherefore, they, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh-huh. What therefore God have joined together, let no man put us under. Let no man put us under. Go ahead. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? Uh-huh. And to put her away. Now, he said, you know, they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give her a writing of divorcement? And to put her away. Now, we're going to stop right here. We're going to come back here. Let's go look at this law that Moses, because we're going to find something else out here, too. Uh, Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 20. Let's go see what, uh, what Moses gave the children of Israel, uh, told them they could write this woman this bill of divorcement. De Deuteronomy 24 and 1. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. We're coming back there, though, Matthew, the 19th chapter. So hold your hand there. Uh, Deuteronomy 24 and 1. Everybody got it? Yeah. Go ahead and read. When a man hath taken a wife uh -huh. and married her, uh -huh. and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, uh -huh. then let him write her a bill of divorcement uh -huh. and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. See, he can just say, well, I don't want to be with her no more. You know, I found some uncleanness in her and she got to go. This is what Moses allowed the children of Israel to do. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh -huh, and God allowed it too. Go ahead and read. And when she is... The, but we're going to see what the master say now, though. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 2. Uh-huh. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another another man's wife. Oh, so she can go and be somebody else's wife, and he want to put her away and give her a bill of divorcement. She can go and be another man's wife. Go ahead and... But hold on a minute, though. Hold on. Go ahead and read. And if the latter... And if the latter husband hate her, uh -huh. and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, uh -huh. and send her out of his house, uh -huh. or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife. Uh, now, this is the second husband now. If he, you know, he won't put her away, give her a bill of divorcement, or he died, go ahead. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. Oh, so she can't go back to her first husband. <laughs> Why? After that, she is defiled. She is defiled. You know, she married this man, and then he gave her a bill of divorcement or whatever. Then, turn around, she married another man. He gave her a bill of divorcement. He died. Now, she still, she can't go back to her first husband. Because that's defiled. That's right. This is what does say the Lord. Go ahead and read. For that is an abomination. Oh, not before only. Before the it, Lord. It, not only is it defiled, but it's an abomination. Before the Lord. Yes, sir. See what we learn in the Old Testament? Amen. You know, because people always, uh, why y'all reading that Old Testament? Because the Old Testament is loaded. Amen. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, that's because there's no light in them. That's right. You know, because that's what the, the apostles, they had the Old Testament. So she could go back to her second her first up because that is an abomination. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Uh huh. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Go ahead. Neither shall he be charged with any business. Uh huh. But he shall be free at home one year. You see that? He couldn't even go off to war when he got married. He had to stay at home. He couldn't go off to war. He couldn't go off to business nowhere. 
he had to stay at home for one year, go in. And shall cheer up his wife, which he hath taken. He, he got to cheer up his wife. <laughs> he got, they got to get to know each other. You understand? <laughs> if y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, let's go back to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Matthew 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Matthew 19 and 7. Pick it up where we left off. But Matthew 19 and 7. We're going to read that again. Go ahead. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a, writ a written, uh, excuse me, to give a written of divorcement, a writing of divorcement, excuse me, to put her away. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. He said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. Go ahead, but what the Lord said. But from the beginning, it was not so. But from the beginning, it was not so. Because he said, a man and a woman shall leave their they father and mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife. That's right. Brother. And they, they two shall be what? One, One flesh. Mm -hmm. So this was not so for the beginning, right? No divorcements. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Uh huh. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, Except it be for fornication. Uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now this is the Lord. He he ain't doing away with the law. He enforcing it, ain't he? Mm -hmm. He's strengthening it, ain't he? Yes, sir. Because Moses allowed y'all to do that, but I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you, read that over. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Uh, which is adultery, go ahead. And shall marry another. Uh huh. Committed for adultery. Now, now, wait a minute now. Because, you know, you got some people think this fornication means if, you know, she go out and she keep it Christmas. Or she go to church on Sunday. You know, spiritual fornication. Mm -hmm. No, this is talking about physical fornication. Because what he just turned around and said, and she'll marry another committed what? Adultery. That's physical, ain't it? Yes, sir. There ain't no uh, uh, spiritual fornication. There is a such thing as spiritual fornication, though. But that's not in this case right here. And I said to you, whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed what? Adultery. Go ahead. And whosoever marry her which is put away doth commit adultery. And if you marry that woman, then you'll commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. His disciples say unto him, If the case of a man be so with his wife, uh -huh. it is not good to marry. <laughs> they just said, well then, it ain't good to marry then, man. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying. He said all men can't receive this saying. So some men, that's why some men are eunuchs. Because they can't receive this saying. They don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Save they to whom it, it is given. Uh-huh. For there are some eunuchs which which were so born from their mother's womb. Uh-huh. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Go ahead. And there be, be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. See, some men made themselves eunuchs. <laughs> you know, they don't want to deal with no woman because it's too much problems. But that's all right. I'm keeping my wife. Amen, amen. <laughs> Go ahead and read. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Go ahead and read some more. Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his you know, hands I just, on I just, them. I just threw pray. this in here. I just threw this in here. Go ahead. Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them. Uh huh. And pray. Go ahead. And the disciples rebuked them. And the disciples rebuked them. Go ahead. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not uh -huh. to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So the moral of this is, don't suffer your children to, not, not to come to the Lord. Amen, brother. You bring your children to the Lord. Uh, train up a child in a way she go and he will not depart from it. They want to go and uh, uh, you not 
you know, a uh, part of uh, 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 the church or whatever your child want to be, don't stop them. Come on, brother. Don't stop them just because, you know, if they want to uh, uh, worship God, let them worship God. If you are atheist or whatever, you know, and all that, you don't believe in God, don't stop your child. Go ahead and read. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. All right, now, let's go to, uh, let's go to Proverbs, the fifth chapter. We got one more after this. Proverbs 5. Proverbs, the fifth chapter, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Proverbs 5. And one. <clears throat> Everybody got? Amen. Go ahead. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thy ear to my understanding. Uh huh. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Go ahead. For the lips of a strange woman. Drop as a honeycomb. Uh-huh. And her mouth is a, is smoother than oil. Go ahead. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Uh-huh. Sharp as a two-edged sword. See, don't let no woman come and entice you, man. You know? Don't let no woman come and entice you. Go ahead and read. Her feet go down to death. Uh-huh. Her steps take hold on hell. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. Remove that thy... Way far from her, uh -huh. and come not near the door of her house. Skip down to verse 15. Go ahead. Drink waters out of thine own sister. This is what I wanted to get to. Drink water out, out of thine own sister. In other words, you lay with your wife. Go ahead and read. And running waters out of thine own well. Uh huh. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Go ahead. Let them be holy. Let, excuse me, let there be only thine own uh -huh. and not strangers Go with, ahead. with thee. Uh -huh. Let thy fountain be blessed 